How's it going guys? I'm the son of Jazzy. Welcome back to another Ultimate Killer Guide. Today we're going to be breaking down everything that you need to know about everybody's favourite killer pigeon, the artist. Now in this video I'm going to be breaking down their powering kit, their add-ons, their three teachable perks and four builds that work fantastic on them. Then we're going to go through some tips and tricks and finally to end we're going to show you how to counter them as survivor. Now we have a lot to get through so really quick before we do start please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really does help me out and it keeps my morale high enough to keep chaining these out because I do enjoy making them. But without further ado let's get straight into the ultimate artist guide. So firstly, let's break down her power and her kit. Now let's begin by simply saying that the artist is a fairly generic killer in terms of attributes. She has a normal 4.6 meters per second movement speed, a normal 32 meter terror radius, and she's categorized as an average height. So completely normal across the board. Now the artist's power is called Birds of Torment, and this allows the artist to play dire crows across the map, and once placed, she's able to fire them off in a straight direction to scout and injure survivors. So even though that's her power, there's actually a couple of nuances that you'll need to know about it. So firstly, if you strike a survivor with a bed, it will do one of two things. If the survivor is hit directly by the bed in an unobstructed 7.5 meter distance, they will take a health state. Basically, if the survivor is standing in this white section, it will damage them. However, if the bed hits a survivor from further away than that 7.5 meters, or the bed has to travel through an object to get them, including walls and bushes, it will instead swarm the survivor and they will have to complete the repel action to get rid of them. Then if the artist hits that survivor again with a bed whilst that survivor is swarmed, it will also deal a health state. Now this may be quite tricky to understand, but summed up, unobstructed hit within the white line, damage state. If a bed hits further away or travels through an object or a wall, it will swarm them. If you hit a swarm survivor with a bed, damage state. It's pretty easy to understand once you know how it works in game, but if you haven't played with it yet, it could be a touch overwhelming, but don't worry, you will get the hang of it. It is also worth saying that because of her ability to do this, she is without question one of the best, if not the best, for completely shutting down loops and forcing quick thinking and actions from survivors in order to not take a hit. And for some reason, Artis is probably one of the most underused killers in my opinion. I think I've gone against 10 to 15 since her release, but she is easily within the top 5 killers of DBD. So if you're looking for a new strong killer to play, you may have just found the perfect one. But anyway, back to her power. When the artist first plays a diacro down, it will have a decay meter. Once this meter runs out, the bed will dissolve, if you will, and face a short cooldown before you're able to reuse the beds. But for every new bed that you add, the meter will reset itself. But it's also worth noting that the more beds you send out at once, the more your power has to recharge before you're able to use it again. Which is why I recommend something called the one bed method, but I'll get into that a little bit later on. Something else worth knowing as well is that when survivors are in the repel action, they cannot perform any tasks. They cannot vault, they cannot drop pallets, they cannot dead hard. If they stop repelling to do so, they will have to start the entire repel action again from scratch. And my last point about her power is that you don't always need to hit survivors to get information. If you're close enough with your crows to a survivor, they will actually show you through killer instinct where they are. So keep your eyes out for this as well. But that's her power summed up, now it's time to go through their add-ons. Firstly, I need to mention that thankfully the artist is a killer who doesn't really need to rely on add-ons, and an add-on-less game will still be very good for her. However, as before, instead of breaking every single one down, I'm going to recommend you my personal favourites and explain why I would recommend them. And don't worry, I'm going to go through all of her add-ons very soon in a future video. But let's start with my personal favourite on her, and I think most regarded as the best. Of course, I'm repairing to her Severed Hands add-on. This simple purple add-on makes it so that survivors who are swarmed who get close to other survivors that aren't swarmed will infect them both. It kind of leeches from one survivor to the other. This can create so much pressure and panic on survivors, especially if two are healing or working on a gen together. So, an amazing add-on. Festering Carrion decreases the bed of torment cooldown by half a second after a crow has taken flight. Basically, it allows you to set your next bed down quicker. This one is amazing for the one crow method as I mentioned, as you can hit a survivor and then hopefully be able to pressure them quickly, and with this add-on, get a hit or get a down. Another one of her best. Ogrief, Olover and Untitled Agony are both amazing for giving swarm survivors an additional handicap. Ogrief, Olover afflicts them with Exhausted and Untitled Agony afflicts them with Hindered, both will help tremendously in a chase. 
And even though Thick Tar is a brown add-on, it does quite a nice little amount as well. Increases the time it takes for survivors to repel the crows by half a second. It doesn't sound like much, but honestly, it can be a nice touch for a little bit of extra pressure. And since it's brown, they're very easy to maintain. To be honest, the artist has quite a lot of decent add-ons, so I'm just going to mention a couple more. The ones that I've just mentioned are definitely my favourite, and they're definitely worth going in depth for. But if you want to go into depth for these ones that I'm about to mention as well, feel free. But some of the ones that I would recommend as well would be Velvet Fabric, Severed Tongue, and Matthias' Baby Shoes. They are all very, very good as well, but the ones that I mentioned are still my absolute favourites for her. But now it's time to move on to her perks, firstly with her three teachable perks. The first of the artist's three teachable perks is called Grim Embrace. This perk makes it so that when you hook a survivor for the first time, you'll gain a token. When you reach four tokens, the entity will block all generators for 40 seconds, and the aura of the obsession will be revealed to you for five. To be honest, I would say this perk is fairly average. It's okay when it works, and it may take enough pressure off the gens when it activates from time to time for you to be able to do a little bit with it, but especially at high MMR, I'd say there are better perks for you to run instead. However, still absolutely viable if you've got nothing else to run. The next is Scourge Hook Pain Resonance. This perk will make four random hooks on the map Scourge Hooks. When you hook a survivor on one, Pain Resonance will instantly explode the generator with the most progress and instantly regress it by 15%. And if a survivor is working on the generator when it explodes, they will scream revealing their location. Now this is easily one of the best generator based killer packs in the game. Not only can 15% really help keeping pressure up on the generators that has the most, but the information you can get from this is also insane. As if you know which gen to pressure, a lot of the time you'll be into your next chase quickly when you go over in that direction to pressure it anyway. So easily one of the best packs in the roster and just in the game in general. And finally, the artist's last teachable perk is called Hex Pentimento. Now, this is an odd perk, so please bear with me, but it can be a surprise if you can get it to work. This perk allows it so that you can see the aura of destroyed totems. Now, you can also rekindle them as the killer. For each rekindled totem you have, you will be given a new additional effect. When you have one totem kindled, you will decrease the survivor's generator repair speed by 30%. Two totems will decrease the healing speed by 30%. Three will affect the recovery speed of survivors when they're downed by 30%. Four affects the speed on which you open the exit gates by 30%. And finally, if you manage to claim all five totems without survivors breaking them, all the hexes will be blocked by the entity indefinitely. So this pet can be pretty amazing if you get survivors to break totems. I'd say this perk works best when you run it with something that gives them more incentive to break the totems, such as other hex perks, especially plaything from Pinhead works really well with Pentimento, but with boons being active, it can be a l very, very tricky. So run this if you fancy an off-meta game that may take survivors by surprise, but it isn't consistently good other than maybe the one totem you get from repair speed. Now that's her teachables out of the way, next I'm going to recommend you four different builds for four different playstyles and skill levels as per usual. For high MMR players, run Barbecue and Chili, Lethal Pursuer, Scorch Hook Pain Resonance and Dead Man Switch. When you start the trial, immediately hit a survivor with a bed and try to pressure them. Then, once down, hook them on a resonance hook and then use Barbecue to know where to pressure next if resonance doesn't give you any information. When Pain Resonance hits, survivors that are working on it will immediately be kicked off and Dead Man Switch will seal the generator for up to 45 seconds, which is an incredible amount of time, and use that to get into another chase and then just rinse and repeat. Also, if Lethal Pursuer isn't really your thing, you can swap it for something like Jolt, which can be give great additional value and touch more pressure against generators. The next for newer players, or the, for those of you who don't have many perks on Lockturner yet, go for Scorch Hook Pain Residence, Sloppy Butcher, Spies from the Shadows, and Agitation. Agitation is a fantastic perk to run alongside Pain Residence, as it allows you to travel faster when carrying a survivor so that you can make it to a Scorch Hook, in the event that sometimes they're just a bit too out of reach. Then Spies will give you extra information to know where survivors are, and, you know, I think the bed perk should go for the bed lady, but yeah. But then finally with Sloppy Butcher makes it so that survivors will be injured for longer and it will give you more time to pressure and down them. Next up for a build to use her beds or to just try and get some lovely snipes in, go for Scorchuck Floods of Rage, Lethal Pursuer, Bitter Murmur and Barbecue and Chili. I only really run this one when I want a more relaxed, off-meta game, but honestly, constantly sniping and going for tricky shots can be super satisfying for her. And all of these perks in some way or another give you all revealing abilities for in the game. From the start, to when the gens are completed, when the survivors are both unhooked and hooked, this would give you many occasions to go for those sweet, sweet snipes, which can be a lot of fun, and also a great practice for them. 
And finally, for an incredibly aggressive Baird build, run Save the Best for Last, Jolt, Infectious Fright, and Noed. Don't respect anyone or anything. Save the Best for Last will be a great help in making sure that the Baird is just as powerful without her Baird's as she is with them. And sometimes mixing M1s and Baird's together can really throw survivors for a loop. So if you can get back to hitting faster, that's where Infectious will also really come in handy. When it procs, immediately fire Baird's into the directions of where the other survivors are, and if you can, pressure and hit them too. Then with Jolt, hopefully the gens won't be too much of an issue and no is a fantastic start for the end game pressure in case survivors just get a bit of the better of you at the start. So for the part that no doubt a lot of you have been waiting for, let's get into our tips and tricks that will hopefully set you apart from the other artists in the fog. Firstly, I'm going to explain what I mean by the one bed method. For the most part, you'll only want to be using one bed at a time with the artist. This will, ironically, give her more pressure than you would with three, as when you hit a survivor with a single bed, your power will recharge quick enough for you to potentially down them with a second. However, if you place two or three at the survivor at the same time, the survivor will probably be able to repel the beds from the first set of crows, and then you will not really be able to hit them with a second, as it would just swarm them again. However, there is an exception to this. If you have a survivor hit with a single bed, then you can place and spam a small area with three to try and get a hit. I would only try to do this around the smaller loops as the bigger loops there's more chance you'll miss and waste your power, but it can be viable for you instead. And that also segues nicely into my second tip. Even though the artist's beds can hit at any range, she is strongest when close to the survivors. You may think trying to snipe from far away might be your best bet as the artist, but even though it is fun, it isn't the case. You want to use your beds the most by shutting down loops in a one-on-one -on -one chase. This is where the artist really shines and will perform at her best. When far away, I mainly use the beds for information by sending them to generators, hooks, or even hex totems if I've got them. So, be aggressive, get into the chases, and then use the beds to quickly down the survivors in the loops. Don't constantly try and snipe throughout the game, or you probably will lose it. Next tip that I have is when it comes to the end game, Artis is probably one of the best to deal with the two door situation as all you really need to do is stand up one and spam the others with a single bed. This is great security, however some survivors may try and be a little bit sneaky and dodge the beds you send them and kind of work in and out of on the, uh, the exit gates. But to beat this, occasionally send out two or three across a little area just to make sure that they're not actually there. And if they are, gun it towards them. So the best way to use your beds in a loop against the artist is to force survivors into the flight path of the bed. So set up a bed on one side of the loop or even through the vault and then chase the other way, pushing the survivor into the path of the crow. Now you'll either hit them with the bed and injure them or they'll take like a wider line than they should have to try and avoid the bed but that'll just give you time to catch up and end one them anyway. But also be careful with this, good survivors who can either dead hard through the path or sort of bait you into firing the beds a bit earlier or a bit late before they double back can cause you to miss, so always take it with a grain of salt. And that actually also brings me on to my next point, only fire the beds if you are more or less certain that they are going to connect. As I just said, survivors can dead hard through the path or stall so that you prematurely fire them, however worst case scenario, you can just still hit them with your M1 even if they try to mind game around the beds. So don't over depend on them and miss an easy shot. A normal hit, no matter what, is better than missing just because you wanted to use your beds instead, so don't over rely on them and always try and go for the M1 unless you are certain that they will connect. The next tip is to learn how to hide your beds by placing them at odd angles through walls, and this is a tip that separates the good artists from the great. Good survivors will be able to counter your beds by completely leaving tiles. By hiding your beds and making the survivor that can't see the direction that they're facing, they will be more inclined to make a mistake or to stay on the path and get hit by some surprised pigeons. So get used to being a bit wacky with your bed placements. As long as you're good at predicting timing and survivor movements and whatnot, you should be fine and you will get better the more you do this. Think of it kind of similar to Pyramid Head's power, but with a completely far longer range. You want to be a little bit surprising with it. You don't want to just take the obvious path. A small tip that I have for what I mainly use at the start of the game when trying to find survivors, A, place beds facing the gens that are furthest away, but don't fire them immediately. Give it maybe five seconds and allow time for survivors to start working on them so you don't completely miss and let the survivors know that you may be on your way to push them or just from getting no information at all. And when you can, try to send beds through as many gens as possible. Being able to check multiple gens with a single bed can be really helpful with information. Another tip is that you can fake placing beds all together and capitalize off the mistakes it will make survivors make. 
by simply holding your power button for a second there is a chance that survivors will instinctually leave the tile before you've even placed one meaning you can save your power get closer to the survivor and hopefully get that delicious m1 hit Sometimes it's better to let your crows decay rather than to send them out willingly. If a survivor leaves a loop entirely and you know that a bed that you placed will not hit them, simply let them decay as the charge time it takes for you to regain your power is only 2 seconds, so you will save a minimum of 3 seconds. So yeah, sometimes it's better to actually let them decay than to waste them and not have your power when you need it. As I said in powers as well, survivors can't do anything when repelling the crows, so use this to your advantage and force them into parts of the loops where they will be forced to stop repelling and to dodge a hit, and therefore making it so that hopefully you will have more of your power charge to hit them as they try to repel again, or they will just simply let you hit them and continue to repel them as normal. Either way, it's a win-win for you. And my last tip is to try and bottleneck survivors or punish them when they do it to themselves. If a survivor is running towards a pallet and it's the only way that they can get through a certain area, get a bed ready and fire it the second that they have no room to move left or right. Keeping them running in as straight as a line as possible can be incredible for the artists getting pressure and for getting hits. So try to look out for these signs early so that you can profit from them as much as possible. So honestly, I think that may be it for all the tips and tricks that I can give you. Of course, if I remember any more, I will leave them in the comments below. And if you guys also have any advice, feel free to leave them in the comments as well. It would be great if we could all kind of get some extra tips going in the comments just to kind of help everyone further. I think that would be great. But now for the survivor out there that wants to know how to counter the angry pigeon lady and to make sure that you have a better chance of surviving, firstly I want to mention lockers. If you are swarmed with beds you can instantly remove them by hopping in and out of a locker. As long as you don't do this when she's close enough to grab you, it's a fantastic way of getting rid of them without wasting as much time in doing so. Next, when you are swarmed, the aura of the swarm will be visible to the killer until you start to repel. A great way to make her miss her next shot is to run in one direction whilst repelling and then after 3 seconds turn around and run the other way. When you repel, the aura will eventually be hidden to the artist so that they will just have to assume you're running in a straight line but she won't know that you've turned around, letting you repel them off for free and wasting more of her time and her power. A small tip, but if you do have a flashlight, you can actually burn the idle crows to remove them quicker. I wouldn't really do this if you're the one being chased yourself as you will lose distance and probably get hit anyway, but it, this would be much better if you're watching a chase as a fellow survivor and it would be a great way to help your teammate by getting rid of the crows at good points in the loop. And as survivor you can actually see the aura of the crows for up to 0.75 seconds when an artist first sends them out. So try to get used to remembering where the artist currently is and looking for this aura because if you do it with enough time and with some good reflexes you may be able to dodge them and again waste her power. The biggest tip that I have for you though in dealing with the artist is to keep as much distance as you possibly can. As I said before, the artist is far more deadly up close, so make sure you leave gens earlier and if need be, and if it's safe to do so, throw pallets early just to keep that distance up and she will have a much harder time hitting and downing you. And the last tip that I have for survivors is to try and cut the line of sight with the artist. If you're looping around a high wall, the artist will be guessing the perfect time to send off her crows to hit you. So a great way to get her to mess up is to break the line of sight and be unpredictable in your looping, so that she can never really know when to hit you with her crows. And hopefully, her trying to mind game you with the crows will just create distance and again, that's exactly what you want. And that's pretty much it, with all of these tips you should be fine in both killing as the artist and taking her on should you face her, but thank you all so much for watching, I really do hope you can take something away from this, as I had again a ton of fun making this, and hopefully my guides are really helping you guys improve as well. I, that's, that's the plan, I really hope they are though. Remember to like and subscribe for more, and be sure to check out my other 7 guides as well, ranging many killers that I've done so far, and with many more coming soon, hopefully I'll get them all done in no time. But. Once again, thank you for watching, have yourselves a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care everyone, bye bye for now.